Hi, welcome back. In my previous review, I talked extensively about the Roborock S7 and gave a sneak peek at how it was different from earlier S5 Max and S6 Max V models. I'll go into more detail on that comparison in this video and answer some questions I read in the comments like why Roborock didn't implement the Y pattern or whether older models will adapt navigational updates like the crisscross pattern. I've done some retesting, mostly with these robots mopping capabilities to understand better how each one is different, quirks, and much more. This video aims to help you decide whether to upgrade to the S7 or stick with older variants like the S5 Max or S6 Max V. There's a lot to unpack, so let's get into it. Currently, these three models are the only options in a Roborock product line with an electronic water tank, meaning users have more control of how much water flows through the pad. Please note that other models like the S5, S6, S6 Pure, and E4 only have gravity tanks, where water continually seeps through the pad with no way of controlling flow. Roborock options with gravity tanks usually have a lower capacity, thus range is limited, plus it isn't as good at removing stains. So the first thing we'll look at, and the reason why you're watching this video, is how these robots compare mopping different types of stains. I use three different stain types, red wine, grape juice, and tomato juice for the tests. I did most of the experiments with a damp pad and I'd recommend you do the same if you need to clean stains immediately. All three robots have rear mounted water tanks. The S7 has the largest capacity at 300 milliliters, while the S5 Max and S6 Max V are slightly lower at 297 milliliters. The S7 water tank and mopping bracket are in independent locations, so you can remove the water tank without having to remove the pad, which isn't the case for the other two as the pad is attached directly to the water tank. The S5 Max was the first robot vacuum I've tested with a proper electronic water tank that works as advertised, meaning there won't be a puddle of water underneath if you forget to empty it. The S6 Max V uses a similar water tank, so the results will be identical. However, what these robots lack is the agitation element that the S7 fills in with Vibra Rise. Vibra Rise is a term referring to two new features Roborock introduces with the S7. Vibra refers to the vibrating feature that adds an agitation facet absent in older Roborock models. A separate motor on the mopping module moves this part on the mopping bracket side to side up to 3000 times per minute. Rise refers to the intelligent mop lifting feature where the pad rises when the robot detects carpet. The same carpet sensor also draws these shaded areas on the map that indicate carpet or rugs. Unfortunately, the S7 won't avoid these areas automatically, but you can use these areas as a reference when drawing no mop zones. The most significant benefit of the vibrating pad is its improved efficiency. If you look at this footage of the S5 Max, it took more than one mopping cycle to remove these red wine stains. You can clearly see the smear marks here after the first three pass run. The S7 removed the whole mess after the second pass and based on the eye test, it didn't leave much residue. So the vibrating feature works at least for this test. One thing I noticed doing the retests is the sticky residue after mopping sugary drinks like red wine or tomato juice. The sugar content creates a sticky surface which may trigger an error code. You can see the S5 kinda stalling here from the friction caused by the sticky surface. The S6 Max V didn't have any of the stalling issues I saw with the S5 Max or S7. It could be a random thing, but I'm mentioning this just to give you a heads up. Regardless, I would discourage using these robots for juice stains as they will leave a sticky residue. One workaround would be doing a second run with a clean pad, but realize that there will be residue buildup on these components underneath, which you'll need to clean immediately afterward, or risk attracting ants. The S5 Max and S6 Max V have similar mopping patterns, though there may be variations in how the map is laid out on the app depending on the design of your home. The S7 is slightly different as it makes a crisscross pattern, which was also the case when vacuuming. I asked Roborock if they will implement this on older models and the answer was yes, except for phased out models like the S4. However, there's no target date yet when this rollout will occur. I also asked why they didn't implement the Y pattern in the S7 and while they've considered it, they haven't done so. Two reasons. First is the potential wear and tear on the wheels that may lead to a higher failure rate. Next is the possible loss of traction 
on inclines and uneven terrain. It's something they're still doing R&D on, so only time will tell if they will add this feature. Another enhancement Roborock put in the S7 is the dedicated mopping option if you select deep from the menu. The S5 Max and S6 Max V don't have this setting, so the vacuum motor still runs during the mopping cycle. With the deep option selected, the S7's power settings are disabled. The vacuum motor is shut off, so it's quieter and improves the range. Roborock told me another difference between deep and standard is turning radius. Choosing deep results in tighter turns with larger overlaps, so the mop's vibrating part touches the stains for better results. The standard setting has wider turns, so it takes less time to mop and works great if you don't need to clean any stains. The S7 mopping cloth is thicker with a larger cleaning area than the S5 Max and S6 Max V pads. The S7 pad is backward compatible with older Roborock mopping brackets, so it's something to consider that may yield better results. If you're thinking about using these robots to mop extensively, I would suggest getting extra pads. Water usage is very efficient for all three. Even after doing two three pass runs on this test area, it still left this much water. Navigation for all three robots remained the same. All use slider and slam to help pinpoint its exact location and avoid obstacles. The only difference is the S6 Max V has a front mounted camera and AI that helps it identify and avoid potential roadblocks like wires. However, this technology isn't perfect as it has blind spots and won't always be accurate at obstacle detection. And with recent firmware updates, non-S6 Max V variants seem to be better at avoiding objects within the laser's line of sight. Notice that these two plastic containers barely moved as the S7 did an excellent job at slowing down and avoiding them. It's better than a Roomba i6 I recently tested. Coverage for all three is similar as these robots are pretty efficient at picking up debris, though the crisscross pattern of the S7 gives it a slight edge with thoroughness. Roborock products are some of the best robots I've tested at navigating through tight areas. Not once did it get stuck or not find home base during my tests. It has this feature they call automatic room recognition, where the app will detect the correct map after the initial scan. Cleaning multiple rooms won't be an issue with this robot as it can traverse through complex layouts. Along with the long 180 minute runtime plus recharge and resume, these robots are suitable even in large homes. Roborock says the S7 has up to 2,500 pascals of suction, which is the same number as the S6 Max V and 500 more than the S5 Max. However, airflow tests reveal otherwise. The S7 has the least amount of airflow of the three with up to 13.91 CFM. One potential reason could be the larger surface area of the brush that restricts air from flowing through. Regardless, all three robots are close in the cleaning tests, both surface and embedded dirt. One reason is the excellent brush design and the seal behind it. The S7 introduces another change, an all-rubber brush that does away with the bristles. Combine that with the floating design, it really does well at picking up surface debris cleanly. The floating brush is a new feature introduced by Roborock that adds multiple planes of movement. It now pivots from side to side, keeping the brush close to the surface, even on uneven terrain, and transitions. The new brush of the S7 is backward compatible, so it fits in older models. Underneath, the brush placement remains the same with one side brush and the main brush flanked by the side wheels. Roborock moved the brush roll of the S7 slightly forward, but I don't think it affects cleaning performance, which we'll look into next. All three robots are excellent, especially at cleaning surface debris. There isn't much of a difference with the percentages, but the S5 Max had the best overall scores thanks in large part to the higher deep cleaning results. Take note that I used 100 grams of sand on mid-pal carpet for these tests, then weighed the bins empty, then full. I do this multiple times to get the average score. So the S5 Max would be my first option for cleaning carpet. Though I like the new brush design of the S7, Without the bristles, it's easier to clean and should last longer. Speaking of which, all three are decent at resisting tangles, but expect hair to wrap around the brush, especially longer strands over 5 inches. With edge cleaning, the S7 and S6 Max V had better results than the S5 Max. However, don't expect any of these three to do as well as other robot vacuums with twin side brushes like the Ecovacs T8. To summarize, all three are above average at cleaning surface dirt. 
Not much difference here with a slight edge going to the S5 Max at cleaning embedded dirt. The S7 is the noisiest option at the max setting with close to 70 decibels, followed by the S6 Max V and S5 Max. All are quiet at the lowest setting at less than 60 decibels. These robots have the same dimension at 13.8 inches wide and 3.8 inches tall, and will fit under furniture with at least 4 inches of clearance. All three are compatible with the Roborock app, but so far, only the S6 Max V and S5 Max are compatible with the Xiaomi Home app. This shouldn't be a sticking point as all three have the same base features such as live maps, room naming, map saving, and containment, though there are some variances which I'll focus on here. Know that all the features I'll mention here are the ones available as of the recording of this video. It may change with future app rollouts. The S7 added several new features. Biggest addition would be the deep mode that shuts off the vacuum motor and makes tighter turns. The standard mode allows users to simultaneously vacuum and mop, but the turns will be wider with less overlap. Next is the crisscross pattern that currently is only available in the S7. As I've said earlier, it will also be available to older models like the S5 Max and S6 Max V except for discontinued variants like the S4. The lift feature tells the robot to raise the mopping pad when it detects carpet. So even if the robot is in mop only mode, the vacuum motor will engage and vacuum the rug or carpet. Unfortunately, it will not avoid carpets automatically. You still have to draw no map zones for it, but with these shaded areas, you have a reference. Only the S6 Max V has a camera tab since it has a front mounted camera. Users can turn it on to see what the robot sees as a stealth CCTV, even when they're away from home. Strangely, the S7 doesn't have the sequence feature the S5 Max and S6 Max V has. This feature lets the users choose the order of which areas are cleaned. However, I don't think this should be a big deal as Robora can add it in future updates. For more information about app features, check the links below for individual product reviews. To conclude this comparison, the Roborock S7 is a compelling option with the mopping enhancements it brings to the table. The vibrating pad helps speed up cleaning stains based on tests. It removed these messes by the second pass, whereas it took longer for the S5 Max and S6 Max V. So essentially, you're paying a premium for the improved mopping and the intelligent mop lifting feature that raises the pad when it detects carpet. Other enhancements, like the crisscross pattern, will be rolled out soon for older models, so I don't think it should be a deciding factor. Overall, I think the S7 is an improvement over the S5 Max and S6 Max V in terms of mopping efficiency, but with similar vacuuming performance. So the question is, are you willing to pay extra for it? Let me know in the comments section below. If this video has been helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified for future comparisons like this. Links are in the description for more information. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.